warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the 9 p.m. live English news edition. Here are the headlines. Workshop on migration statistic in Djibouti. Palestine urged UN to support international peace efforts concerning the Middle East. Hello, welcome to your newsroom for having the news in details. The Ministry of Social Affairs and Solidarity, Mr. Mrs. Muna Osman Al, received yesterday morning for a farewell visit the representative in Djibouti of the World Food Program, Mrs. Mutinta Chimuka, whose mission to the Republic of Djibouti ended. This courtesy visit was also an opportunity to share on the fruitful partnership between the two institutions through the programs implemented jointly. The Minister for Social Affairs commended the remarkable work carried out by the World Food Program headed by Mrs. Mutinta Shimuka, expressing her sincere thanks for the support of her institution, WFP, in the Ministry's activities to help the most vulnerable population groups. The meeting uh, room of the UNFT hosted this morning a ceremony to hand over equipment and supplies to the Djiboutian Association. This donation is part of the Capacity Building Program for Djiboutian Association financed by the USAID and implemented by FHI 360. This supply is composed of computer and office automation equipment. The objective of this no noble action is to strengthen the capacity to promote Djiboutian Association. This event was attended by many personalities, including the Vice, uh, Vice President of the UNFD, Mrs. Hassan Ahmed Bilal, the Ambassador of the United States, Mr. Larry Andre, and the Executive of the Concerned Sectoral Institutions. The President Representative and the Ambassador of the United States handed over lots of equipment and supplies to the Distribution Association. Finally, the ceremony closed the uh, traditional family photo ceremony. For her part, the Vice President of UNFD thanked all the parties who contributed and did not spare any uh, lot of efforts. Let's listen uh, to her quotes. It is with great honor that we welcome you today to the ceremony for the presentation of equipment supplies to the Djibouti and associations. This act is part of a capacity building program for associations funded by the USLD and implemented by the National Union of Jewish and Women, the oldest civil society organization, and other organizations and associations. Their capacities have been strengthened under this program with technical support in the areas of planning, strategies, training, and coaching. Today, the institutional support consists of providing office equipment and supplies for the proper functioning of the organizations. We would like to take this opportunity to express our sincere thanks on behalf of the AFD on the airwaves of all the organizations presented in Lyon. It helped, and the U.S. Embassy, which has spared no effort to support the NGOs and enable them to take an active part in the sustainable development of the country. Now the director of the National Institute of Statistics, Mr. Idris Ali Sultan, shared this morning a workshop on a regular migration statistic at the People's Palace. In close collaboration with the IOM, uh, the objective of the workshop was to complete the country questionnaire on labor migration, which will pave the way for the third edition of the report on labor migration statistics in Africa. The workshop also made it possible to complete the country questionnaire on irregular migration, bringing together around the uh, table senior officials from the various sectors, ministries of governmental and non-governmental institutions. With the with statistics on migration in Djibouti, labor migration has now become a political phenomenon, economic, social, and cultural development. The expected result will make it possible to gather as much data on migration as possible, compiled with the various uh, partners. Now, the director of the National Institute of Statistics, Mr. Idris Ali uh, Sultan, conceptualizing this phenomenon, recalled in his speech that the Horn of Africa, and in particular the Republic of Djibouti, is a region characterized by intense circulatory mobility for several years. Let's listen to his words. La migration is today a phenomenon planetary. As you know, migration today is a global phenomenon that affects the lives of most people around the world. There is not a television program or show in the world that does not talk about immigration. 
When we look at 2019, for example, it is estimated that there will be 272 million international migrants each year. The number of people crossing international borders is growing and growing. One of the greatest challenges of our time is to respond effectively to large-scale population movements, including the movement of irregular migrants, about whom it is particularly difficult to obtain accurate information. If, in the past, much was said about the Mediterranean, I think that in Djibouti, in the Horn of Africa, our region is a subject to a very massive migration. The Horn of Africa has not been spared. The region has been characterized by intense interior and international migration flows for several decades. The number of migrants entirely displaced persons and refugees in, in the millions. For example, in the Horn of Africa, our country, because of its geostrategic geographical position between West Africa and the Gulf states, is an essential transit country for migration flows in the region, according to estimates. The very few estimates we have been able to obtain, we have about 100,000 people arriving in our country every year. 100,000 people is quite a very small population. This is a very high percentage. The International School for Advanced Training in Judicial Policy Practice hosted this morning a closing ceremony for the first class of the six-week National Advanced Training for Investigator courses. This course, which starts on June 14, 2020, brought together 19 trainees from the Coast Guard, National Police and National Gendarmerie. Chaired by the uh, Chief of Staff of the National Gendarmerie, Colonel Zakaria Hassan Aden, the event was attended by the Deputy Prosecutor uh, General uh, Leila uh, Mohammed Ali, the Prefect of the Arta Region, the President of, President of the Arta Region uh, Council, the Internal Security, and the, uh, the uh, French Embassy in Djibouti, representative of the General Directorate of the National Police and the Coast Guard. On this occasion, the major of the uh, class of trainees received their diplomas and the insignia of the school from the hands of the officials present on the scene. At the end, the trainees and officials posed for the traditional family photo before being received by Colonel Zakaria Hassan Aden, a chief of staff uh, of, uh, at the National Gendarmerie in the Hall of Honor of the Conference Center where uh, he met with them. Colonel Zakaria Hassan Aden did not fail to congratulate the trainees for their excellent results and took the opportunity to present each of them with a gift before proceeding to the refreshment. During this colorful ceremony, the president of the promotion took the floor after reading uh, the Holy uh, Quran to summarize the training program that the trainees have followed during the past six weeks before thanking the various authorities for honoring the ceremony with their presence despite their professional constraint. For her part, the Deputy uh, Prosecutor General delivered a speech in which she addressed the trainees to urge them to get of the routine and to cultivate a taste of sharing knowledge acquired. Let's listen to her. À ce titre, vos missions principales sont énumérées par l'article 13. In this regard, your main tasks are listed in Article 13 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, which stipulates that the judicial police are responsible for establishing bridges of the law, gathering evidence and searching for the perpetrators. The demonstration and the approach that you will have to take to solving particular cases prove that you could carry out your tasks with the utmost professionalism. The second more historic and more revealing of your responsibilities, since it is ultimately about policing at the middle level. The investigations that you will be responsible for coordinating and during very city of a fact allow members of the public prosecutor's office to be fully informed about the substance of an offense. The commandant of the school, squadron leader Hussein Mohammed Qayyad, also gave a speech in which he highlighted the intensity of the training and the assiduity of the trainees. Here what he said. The international has been inaugurated on 19 March 2000. The international school was integrated on March 19, 2019, and since then has continued to grow. It is rightly worth recalling the importance of these vulnerable centers of excellence which is in fact a first in Djibouti for the training of internal security forces from the African continent, the Indian Ocean, and of course the host country, Djibouti. The 3PG, which is a center of excellence, is intended to build the capacity and development of the security forces workshops. Hence its main objective, particularly in the development of the digital police and in the field of forensics, and as I have just said, this is a first in Djibouti. It is unique of its kind in Africa, in the Indian Ocean. And since the opening of this international school, the 3PG has responded with its academic agenda and its environment of cooperation with the host countries. 
host countries and national and international organizations. Leading the way was France, which is an historic ally in the Republic of Djibouti. As you can see so well, the three PG have modern infrastructures that allow them to welcome a national and international audience in optimal conditions and high standards of teaching. The training that is provided, which is given at the international school, highlights at each level convincing and encouraging results. Encouraging results. On Tuesday, 21st July 2020, a ceremony was held to hand over a batch of disinfection equipment for the CLE Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurship to the Djibouti International Airport. Indeed, due to the disruption of the activities at the airport following the opening of borders, the CLE expressed its willingness to join the government's efforts to combat COVID-19. This willingness was materialized by the gracious handing over of a disinfection booth and an automatic hydroalcoholic gel dispensation device. The director of the uh, Jubilee International uh, Airport, Mr. Mohamed Yusuf Ramarki, expressed his gratitude and thanks for the donation received. For her part, the director of the CLE said that this donation was a contribution from the institution she leads in the fight against COVID-19. She also thanked the, her uh, counterpart for agreeing to receive and use the equipment in the health security activities at the uh, airports. Now concerning the evolution of this situation of COVID-19 in Djibouti, for today of uh, 22nd July 2020, uh, 377 100, uh, tests were carried out, 20 patients were declared cured, uh, 3 uh, tests were positive and 2 cases of death. Do not hesitate to call 1517 for any useful information or in case of suspicions of symptoms related to COVID-19. Finally, the general assessment is as follows. 55,048 uh, tests were performed, 5,030 people were diagnosed uh, positive for COVID-19, 4,904 cases have been declared cured and 58 deaths have been recorded since the beginning of the pandemic in the Republic of Djibouti. Please remain vigilant, respect the bar barrier justice, protect yourself and the others. Now another news, the meeting room of the town hall hosted this morning a signing ceremony of partnership agreement between the two, uh, between the town hall of Djibouti and the RNDS. This partnership agreement has several important points, namely the initiative of uh, Troy Canvas, of which RNDS has a copyright, the participation of the Djibouti City Council in the proje project of Kobeza Plural Civil Society uh, through the twinning of Djibouti with other capitals of Kobeza countries, and the inauguration of the Intercultural Library of the UTE Boka Ahmed Center. At the end of the ceremony, the mayor of uh, the, uh, Djibouti, uh, Mrs. Fadum Awal Usman, and the president of the National Network for Social Development, Mrs. Boka, proceeded to the signature of the partnership agreement. The president of the National Network for Social Development, Mrs. Boka, uh, thanked first of all uh, Mrs. Fadum Awal Usman, mayor of the city of Djibouti, for the warm welcome uh, they received. The implementation of Tajura Balho project, a decisive step that has just been taken on this northern uh, corridor, will undoubtedly improve the flow of Ethiopian traffic and give satisfaction to the Ethiopian market. Indeed, the operational nature of this road allow uh, the, uh, the free uh, movement of goods in the most efficient and rapid way to serve northern Ethiopia from the port of Tajura. The arrival of the first bulk carrier at the port of Tajur marks the beginning of port and board activities, which uh, will not only contribute to the opening up of the region, but will also generate employment opportunities for the region of Tajur. Satisfied with this new opportunity, which will have an economic fallout to the population of Balho as well as the authorities of this region, the Deputy Omar Adam, the Deputy Director of the Northern Corridor, the Deputy uh, Prefect Abdullah Kamil, and elected Ali Dini, member of the Region Assembly, have experienced their full satisfaction in Balho, where they welcomed the first vans transporting goods to Ethiopian uh, destination. Finally, it should be also noted that all along the Northern Corridor, the police, customs and contribution remain mobilized to ensure the control of vehicles to strictly monitor the smooth running of goods operation. 
Now, as planned within the framework of the twinning, the SEGS branch in Obok welcomed its twin sister from Arta around noon. Lero was composed of those in charge, about 10 young people from Arta. In, their, uh, the leadership, in the, the leadership pardon, of the Deputy Director Kamildini of the Obok SEGS, the staff and young ob from Obok were mobilized to welcome the young people from Arta and their elders in the morning. The Obok sub-director put all the preparations in motion, thus mobilizing a part of the population to welcome the young people from Arta at the return of Obok that the first contact took place pardon, between the two sub directorates of two respective regions, Obok and Arta. This was the first contact of the uh, twinning in Obok region. Once the reception at the entrance, the two sub directorates went to the CDCs of Obok for first sitting around the table, a small cl clarification which allowed detailing the objective of the twinning in front of young uh, people of two uh, regions. Now, uh, moving to the international news in Palestine, on Tuesday, urged the United Nations to support the international coalition led by the uh, quartet aimed at finding a just and lasting solution to Palestinian question. The details in this video. Mr. Mohammed as the Union Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Nikolai Malidonov to support Palestinian call for a new international conditions and an all-inclusive peace conference based on international law international legitimacy and UN resolutions. During the meeting, the two sides also discussed the latest political developments and ways to strengthen cooperation to counter the COVID-19 pandemic in Palestine, according to a press release issued by Mr. Mohammed's office. This is it for this uh, edition. Thank you for watching us. Have a wonderful evening.